Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Jai Sri Javaji. Let's continue it with part 20, the four seasons of marriage. Now let's go back to Gilred who loaded the dishwasher like an engineer and Marshi who loaded it as if she were playing frisbee. His personality is strong on organization whereas hers is strong on spontaneity. How might they maximize their differences? Perhaps they could agree that Gerard would be the team member who would load the dishwasher because his methods tends to produce cleaner dishes and fewer broken glasses. On those evenings when he has a meeting and Marshy loads the dishwasher, he would allow her the freedom to do it her way. He knows that when he unloads the dishwasher the next morning, he might find spoons still covered with peanut butter and maybe a chipped glass or two. But he realizes that these issues aren't the end of the world. The dirty spoons can soak in the measuring cup that she forgot to put in the dishwasher and the glasses are, can be replaced. After all, he's married to a spontaneous woman who keeps his life exciting. It's a small price to pay for such a treasure. Maximizing our skills and minimizing our weaknesses are part of moving us back to the springtime of marriage. Five steps to maximize your differences. First one, identify your differences. Second, look for assets in your differences. Number three, learn from your differences. Number four, replace condemnation with affirmation. Number five, discover a plan for maximizing your differences. What if your spouse is not willing to work with you on maximizing your differences? What if he or she is logged into one way of doing things and is not even willing to discuss your differences? All is not lost. You still have the power of influence. In the next chapter, I want to help you learn how to use your influence in a positive way. Even if your spouse initially won't participate or cooperate, you can still create positive changes in your marriage. Strategy 7. Implement the power of positive influence. If your marriage is in the season of winter or fall, you are probably reading this book alone. You wish that your spouse would read it. You will wish he or she would be willing to implement the strategies that would move your marriage towards to the spring and summer seasons. But based on past experience and your current circumstances, you have little hope that he or she will do so. Todd, who has been married for 14 years, expressed his frustration. I feel trapped in so many instances. It doesn't matter what I say, it always leads to issues. I am very concerned about giving up on my marriage because I have so much invested. My wife has gone to work in the last year, which helps, but she brings her homework and I feel like I have no say in things, yet she tries to manage all the details of my life. I guess you can read the frustration in my writing. I harbor bitterness toward her. We are not dealing with the issues and I am tired of listening to the same winning over and over. I want to have a better marriage, but I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm deeply concerned. That is why I came to the seminar, even though she would not come with me. Sonia expressed a similar sense of hopelessness. She is in her third marriage and has been married for three and a half years. At present, our marriage is in the fall season. It is producing high anxiety. The presence of anger is stagnating our relationship. Conflicts over the children bring great sadness. At times, it is overwhelming and causes a spirit of defeat. Constant struggles are creating a future of uncertainty for us and the children. All these rampant emotions bring fear. I am very concerned about a relationship. I have asked my husband to go for counseling but he refuses. 
I don't know what else to do. Strategy 7 is for people like Sonia and Todd who are willing to work on their marriages but find little encouragement from their spouses. Although these husbands and wives sincerely hope that things will get better, many of them believe that they have already done all they can do to deal with the issues that have kept them from marital unity. Most are discouraged with the results. If they have gone for counseling, it has not been productive. If they have read books, they have read them alone. Wishing the spouse would hear what the author is saying and be moved to change. Some have tried the method of gentle confirmation but have been met with a silent audience and no response. Some in desperation have tried yelling and screaming. Their pain has been so intense that they have actually lost control trying to express it. Their loud cries for help have brought a counter-attack or withdrawal. Consequently, some husbands and wives have resigned themselves to the idea that their spouse will never change and they are left with only two options, tolerate a life of misery or get out of the marriage and hope for something better. Once they choose between these two sorry alternatives, they become prisoners of their decision. Thousands of people live in these self-made prisons because they fail to understand the power of positive influence. It is true that you cannot change your spouse, but it is equally true that you can and do influence your spouse every day. Because we are individuals and because we have free will, no one can force us to change our thoughts or behavior. On the other hand, because we are also relational creatures, we are influenced by everyone with whom we interact. We are influenced by what we hear and see. Advertisers make millions of dollars each year because of this reality. They do not make us buy the products, but they do influence us otherwise they would stop advertising. The power of influence has profound implications for the seasons of marriage. However, we must first acknowledge that we cannot directly change our spouse's personality or behavior. We cannot control how they think or feel or the words that come out of their mouths. We can make requests but we cannot be assured that they will respond positively to our requests. If we mistakenly believe that we are directly change our spouse's behavior, we will likely spend our time trying to manipulate them. The idea behind manipulation is that if I do this, my spouse will be forced to do that. If I can make him happy enough, he will respond to my request. Or if I can make her miserable enough, she will respond to my request. However, every effort at manipulation will ultimately fail for one simple reason. Our spouses have the freedom to choose their response. The moment they realize that they are trying to control them by manipulation, they rebel. No one wants to be manipulated or controlled. Even though you cannot directly control your spouse's attitude and actions, you do have the ability to influence him or her either positively or negatively by words or by deed. Every time you encounter your spouse, you exert a subtle influence. If your spouse walks into the room, gives you a hug and a kiss, and says, I love you, I have missed you today, he or she has influenced you in a positive way. However, if your spouse walks into the house, fails to acknowledge your presence, and go straight to the computer room or the refrigerator or if your spouse walks in and immediately criticizes your appearance or behavior, he or she shall have influenced you in a negative way. Everything you do or say or don't do or say influences your spouse for better or for worse. Your words and behavior can either cause your spouse tremendous pain, hurt and discouragement like the icy winds of winter or be a soothing balm that powerfully influences your spouse in the direction of positive change like the wind breezes of summer.
Over the years, I have been tested the strategy with numerous individuals in troubled messages. When a husband or wife is willing to choose a positive attitude that leads to positive actions, the change in the spouse is often radical. One woman said, I can't believe what has happened to my husband. I never dreamed he could be as loving and kind as he has been for the last three months. This is more change than ever anticipated. The power of positive influence holds tremendous potential for troubled marriages. When all is said and done, you will have had a positive or a negative impact on your spouse. Which will it be? The choice is yours. Choosing to have a positive impact. If I got out of bed only on the mornings when I really felt like getting out of bed, I would be covered with bed shows. I go against my feelings almost every morning and choose to get up because I desire to do something positive with my life. Normally, because the day is over, I feel good about having gotten up. My positive choices led to positive actions that result in positive feelings. I feel good about myself because I have invested my day wisely. Positive choices lead to positive actions that result in positive feelings. The same principle applies to marriage. When I choose to have a positive influence on my wife, regardless of how I might feel, my positive choices lead to positive actions that result in positive feelings for both me and my wife. Choosing to implement the power of positive influence is good for your own mental health in addition to the positive impact it will have on your spouse. Where do we begin? Perhaps you can identify with the woman who said to me, our marriage has been so dysfunctional for so long, I don't know where to start. The first step in any positive change is to recognize and acknowledge that you have a choice. You don't have to be controlled by our emotions or your spouse's emotions. You don't have to respond in the same old way to the same old provocations. You can choose a different response. Even if the biggest obstacle is your marriage, is your own past behavior and attitudes, you don't have to stay stuck there. Just because you have made your bed doesn't mean you have to lie in it. You can choose to get up and make a positive investment in your marriage. You may feel hurt, disappointed, frustrated, or even angry in your marriage. But these emotions need not control your behavior. Emotions are to be acknowledged and processed, but they are not to be controlling factor in your lives. If we allow angry feelings to control our behavior, we may lash out with critical condemning words or physical abuse. On the other hand, we may say to ourselves, I feel angry, I feel hurt, disappointed and frustrated. But I want to have a positive influence on my spouse and I refuse to be controlled by these emotions. Positive change begins with positive choices. Once you have decided to implement the power of positive influence in your marriage, you are ready to begin utilizing the six other strategies discussed in this book. After 30 years of counseling married couples, I know of no better approach. Let's assume for a moment the worst case scenario. Your spouse is unwilling to read this book, is unwilling to go for counseling, is unwilling to even talk about your marriage and appears to be totally close to the idea of improving your marriage. Perhaps he or she is even critical of your efforts. If this is true, you may be feeling all the emotions of winter and fall. I am not encouraging you to deny these feelings. Rather, I am encouraging you to admit your feelings but not to be controlled by them. The decisions to implement the power of positive influence may be the most significant decision you have ever made in your marriage. Therefore, I am inviting you to join me in walking through the first six strategies again, looking at them from the perspective of someone in your situation. At the moment, your spouse may not be willing to join you in the journey, but I want you to acknowledge that he or she cannot keep you from making the journey
As you travel, I will introduce you to individuals who have tried these strategies and reap the benefits. That's all for today. Let's continue tomorrow. Please do subscribe to my channel, share it and like. Thank you so much.